Hi everyone, this is Mr. Clements. And Mrs. Moran. As you probably heard, at Monday night school committee meeting, our community voted to begin the hybrid phase of our return to school next week. We are so excited to finally welcome you back to the building next week and have been doing a lot of planning to be sure that we are ready. We know that there are many questions on your mind. With so much information to review, we've put together nine things every NITMUC student should know about going hybrid. We've also created a frequently asked questions document, which is linked below, in order to get you the information you need to return to school next week. Thanks for watching and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. The first thing we wanted all students to know is the new hybrid schedule. This is a schedule that was shared with you over the summer with a few minor adjustments. Essentially, you'll see on the schedule Cohort 1 and Cohort 2. Your cohort assignments were emailed to you two weeks ago, and you should have that in your student email, as well as parents received a copy of that email. Essentially, the way the hybrid schedule works is that two days a week, Cohort 1 on Monday and Tuesday are in person, and Cohort 2 is in person on Thursday and Friday. The Wednesday schedule stays the same as it has always been. Wednesdays will be full remote for all students from 7.30 until 11.40 a.m. with the times not changing. You will see the times for the hybrid schedule when students are in person have been adjusted slightly to account for passing times and lunch times throughout the school day. So in a normal week, students will have two days in person, one day of synchronous remote learning when their entire class will be together, and two days of asynchronous learning, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. For next week, the hybrid schedule looks a little bit different because it is a holiday week and we have no school on Monday. Therefore, the adjusted schedule does not account for the typical Wednesday synchronous remote day. You will see on the screen in front of you that cohort one will be in person on Tuesday and Wednesday, while cohort two is learning remotely asynchronously. And on Thursday and Friday, cohort two will be in person, while cohort one is learning asynchronously remotely. Some other things to note about the hybrid schedule next week and going forward in our normal weeks is that the day begins at 7.30, just as our day begins at 7.30 now. Doors open at 7.15, so we ask students not to arrive any earlier than 7.15 as they need to report directly to class and be in class by 7.30. If you are a student and are driving, there is a link to the parking pass form in the Frequently Asked Questions document so that you can access that there. If you're being dropped off by a parent or a sibling, you can be dropped off in the inner loop near the flagpole or in the faculty parking lot near the band room hallway. Both of those doors will be opened at 715 for students to enter. Students are not allowed to enter through the loading dock as they have in past years. Another thing to note is that the day ends at 2 o'clock, so no longer are days ending at 2.20. The day ends at 2 o'clock and there will be a staggered dismissal starting at 1.57 to get students to their buses, rides home, or to their cars. All students are expected to leave school grounds at the end of the day as the only thing happening after school is athletics, so athletes will get changed and report to their field or their location where their team is meeting. If you happen to arrive late to school, please use the main doors to get into the building. You will need to ring the buzzer and then you will be directed to complete a digital sign-in form if arriving late. A second thing to know about going hybrid is what is asynchronous learning? Asynchronous learning will take place on the days that you will be learning from home and not attending school. During asynchronous learning, each teacher will be providing about 180 minutes worth of assignments over the course of two school days. The assignments provided by your teachers may have specific due dates that occur within a regular school day. In these cases, your work should be completed before the deadline. In cases where your deadline does not occur during the school day, you'll have increased flexibility with your schedule. You can expect that teachers will often include checks for understanding or even live opportunities to check in with them during your regularly scheduled class time on asynchronous days. 
we encourage you to keep a routine during asynchronous learning days. Take advantage of the added flexibility of your days, but continue with the habits that work during remote learning, including keeping a regular wake-up time, working from a desk or a table, eating healthily and regularly, getting enough sleep, exercising, and more. Remember that your teachers may schedule time for you to work with them during these days. We encourage you to set up times to work with your classmates in breakout rooms or study sessions. This will give you opportunities to get support in learning, social time, and feedback on your work. Create set times using FaceTime, Zoom breakout rooms, or good old-fashioned phone calls. This is also a great introduction to the type of beyond-the-class collaboration that is a key part of learning in the, in the college setting. Email is the best way to get in touch with your teachers during asynchronous learning days. Keep in mind that your teachers will likely be in class when you reach out. With this in mind, you may not receive an immediate response to your question. However, your teachers will get back to you in a reasonable amount of time. A third thing to know about going hybrid is that staying safe is a community effort. As we return to school, we know that safety is on everyone's mind. Staying safe and healthy is a community effort, and by working together to follow health guidelines, we can keep each other safe. One way to support community health is by self-assessing using daily symptoms checklist. If you're not feeling well, if you've been in contact with someone with COVID or someone who has COVID-like symptoms, err on the side of caution. Stay home and reach out directly to Mrs. McGinnis, our school nurse, to discuss next steps. Masks. Masks are required at all times at school, including bus stops, on the bus, and on school property. Teachers will provide mask breaks throughout the days for students. Please keep in mind that per health guidelines, gaiters, bandanas, and masks with vents will not be allowed. Be sure that you wear a mask and that you have an extra one in your bag each day, just in case it needs replacing. We will have masks on hand for those students who are in need of one. Physical distancing. We're asking that you keep your distance throughout the school day, looking to keep six feet between you and others. In the classroom and in the cafeteria, you will be seated six feet apart. We have created protocols and practices that allow you to keep this distance, and we're asking that you do your part by not gathering in the lobby, cafeteria, auditorium, hallways, bathrooms, etc. And that's before school, during school, and after school. Washing your hands. Remember to wash and sanitize your hands frequently to stop the spread of germs. You'll notice that each classroom has hand sanitizer and that there are hand sanitizing stations throughout the school. Cleaning protocols. Our custodians have a cleaning and disinfecting schedule that will ensure that all high-touch areas and bathrooms are cleaned multiple times over the course of the day and that all areas in the school are cleaned nightly. By working together to follow each of these topics, we can help to keep each other and our community safe. The fourth thing you need to know is that when you arrive at NITMUC during your first day of in-person learning, you will notice that all hallways and stairwells have been designated as one-way travel. It is possible to get to all locations in the building following the one-way travel, although it may not be the shortest distance. We ask that you adhere to the one-way travel at all times throughout the day, which will allow us to keep physical distance between students as we are passing in the hallways. We've included linked in the frequently asked questions document, but also you can see on the screen in front of you maps of every floor at NITMUC. If you would like to plan some of your travel from class to class or in the morning going to your first class before arriving at NITMUC. Once you get here, all hallways will be clearly marked and stairwells will be clearly marked to guide you around the building. So if you are looking at the first floor, you will see that all hallways will lead in towards the cafeteria. If you are looking to travel from the first floor to the second floor, you will see that the stairwell that you will need to do that is the stairwell that leads up to the lobby. The other stairwells on the first floor are do not enters as they are stairwells that lead down to the first floor. On the second floor, you can see that the hallway traffic travels to the outside edges and those two end stairwells can be used for traveling upstairs to the third floor or traveling downstairs to the first floor. And finally, the third floor at NITMUC, you'll see that the hallway traffic travels inward. You can use those center stairs for getting down to the second floor or the first floor, but are not able to access those end stairwells. 
Again, these maps are located in the Frequently Asked Questions document so that you can plan ahead. But teachers will provide time on that first day of school for you to map your route to the next class and assist any students who have questions about how to travel the building. The fifth thing to know about going hybrid at NetMuck, lunches. Each day will run four lunches during the third block of the day. You can access your lunch assignments in Clever. Students will be allowed to eat in the cafeteria, outside in the courtyard, weather permitting, and in the gymnasium during fourth lunch only. Unfortunately, these are the only locations available to students during lunchtime. The lobby, hallways, and media center are not available. In the cafeteria, students will be seated facing the windows and will be physically distanced six feet apart. Available seats will be clearly marked with numbers. You can access the cafeteria setup in the Frequently Asked Questions document. Students will need to log their lunch location via Google Form each day for contact tracing purposes. The tables in the courtyard can be used by one student at a time. Students may use the entire area in the courtyard, however. Seating locations have been marked on the grass to help you ensure appropriate physical distancing. You are welcome to bring a towel or other small blanket that can fit easily inside your backpack to sit on during lunch. We ask that once you choose your seat for a particular lunch that you remain in that seat. Students can go to the courtyard from the cafeteria, but they should not switch seats during lunch. Students who would like to get lunch from the cafeteria are asked to complete the lunch request form on a daily basis prior to 8 a.m. in order to be sure that the food services staff makes lunch for them. A lunch request form can be located in Clever. Students who request a lunch will be able to pick up their meal in the cafeteria and then report to a designated location, either the cafeteria, courtyard, or gymnasium, to eat their food. The sixth important thing to know is that communication, now more than ever, is so important. We have put together clear systems for communication for your return. One way we're looking to make communication easier is by organizing all of our digital communications in one spot through a tool called Clever. Clever will provide you with access to information with a single click. Simply look for your Clever app on your device and log in with your MURSD account. When you log in, you'll find access to a range of resources, including digital tools, a health and safety checklist, and Google Forms that will be an important part of each day. Some of these forms include a sign-in for late arrivals to school, a sign-out form to the restroom during the day, a lunch request form that you will fill out each day that you would like to get school lunch, a lunch location form to note where you are seating each day at lunch, a school counseling meeting request form, and access to a form to schedule an appointment with our school nurse. We will guide you in logging into Clever on the first day of school if you haven't done so already so that you have easy access to these communication tools. Secondly, check your email. This is the most reliable place to get information about what is going on each day at school. Be sure you are checking your student email each and every day. The seventh thing to know about going hybrid in NITMUC, how do I access school counseling and the school nurse? Two important resources that are available to you each day are our school counseling department and our school nurse. Each plays an important role in offering help and support for life, learning, and health at NITMUC. School counselors and nurses are available on an as-needed basis, but we are also trying to, to limit unnecessary travel to these locations. If you need immediate assistance from your nurse or school counselor, Please let your teacher know and he or she will make contact with the appropriate office. If your need is less pressing, email your counselor or the nurse directly or complete the form in Clever and someone will be in touch with you to set up an appointment. The eighth thing you need to know is directed to our new students. This includes current ninth graders as well as students who are new to our district in each of the other grades. This week, on Thursday and Friday, between 3 and 4 p.m., we will have the building open so that you can make your way around the building, locate your four classes that you will go to over the course of the day, and familiarize yourself with the new setup, one-way hallways and one-way stairwells. We ask that this time is dedicated to new students only so that we don't have an overcrowding of the building. Additionally, on the first day of school, 
we ask that all new students, including freshmen, report to the gymnasium straight through the main doors and your teachers will meet you there or we will help you get to your first class of the day to alleviate any confusion or anxiety you may have about getting to your first class. Finally, understand that this process and procedures is new to all students at NIPMOC. You are not alone. Teachers are going to provide detailed directions over the course of the day to all students to help them navigate the building and learn the new protocols. The last thing you need to know about returning to school is we're, we're excited, excited to, to have, have you back. back. We know that this is a lot of information to process, but remember that both of us, as well as all faculty and staff members, are here to answer your questions and offer support. We can't wait to welcome you back to school next week.